If one says, as did then Illinois State Senator Barack Obama in a 2001 radio interview, the Constitution is a charter of negative liberties. It says what the states can't do to you. It says what the federal government can't do to you. But it doesn't say what the federal government or the state government must do on your behalf. How would that shape one's approach to government? The answer, of course, depends on if one believes in or rejects the restraints implicit in negative liberties. Now, as always, Morning Minutes in the Bible on an American Missionary is not a political commentary. So this is not a discussion of what President Obama believes concerning the Constitution. Therefore, any comments saying anything about him, good or bad, will be deleted. The purpose of this post is to discuss the phrase negative liberties in the context of biblical instructions, particularly in relation to the events surrounding King Uzziah. Around 750 BC, the exact date isn't known, Uzziah was at the height of his power as king, and under him, Judah was blessed by God with peace and prosperity. Yet, despite his faith in God, King Uzziah decided to enter the temple and offer worship like one of the priests. When they saw what he was doing, the priests surrounded him to prevent him from entering. He became enraged at their defiance of his will until God struck him with leprosy. 2 Chronicles 26, verses 16 through 21. Pay close attention to the simple statement of the priest. It is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated to burn incense. 2 Chronicles 26, verse 18. Looking back to the law of Moses, he knew that God had specified Aaron and his sons as priests. Exodus 28, verses 1 through 3. He also knew what happened to the Levites who challenged that negative liberty. Number 16, verses 1 through 40. Not even Christ, who was born of the tribe of Judah, like Uzziah, could ignore the law's negative liberty, which is why the law of Moses had to be ended and replaced so he could be our high priest. Hebrews 7, verses 11 through 28. By declaring who could be a priest, the law of Moses excluded all others not of the tribe of Levi, and more specifically, the family of Aaron. It put limits on the priesthood, and terms like negative liberties implicitly recognize God-ordained limitations. Even today, under the perfect law of liberty, only the one who abides by it will be blessed in what he does, James 1.25 which means we must pay close attention to what God said in the New Testament and abide by his negative liberties. In a culture that worships individual autonomy and the freedom to do what we want to do and become whomever we want to become, accepting God's limitations are difficult, even for believers. Will we abide by his limitations or push the boundaries to fit our own preferences? May I suggest abiding by his limitations, even when we don't like them. And maybe, just maybe, as we grow in love for him, we will learn to love his limitations too. Thank you for watching Morning Minutes in the Bible on An American Missionary. Until next time, this is James McClenney helping you have a great day.